Hello everyone, this is the second part of an explanation video of the Jersey fishing dispute from Jersey's perspective. I have the first video linked below where I give a detailed explanation of the fishing dispute back in May. Please watch that video before watching this one, as this video will not be entirely comprehensive without it. However, I thought it was necessary to make an updated video with more up-to-date information and to debunk misinformation going around that places Jersey in the wrong. To clarify, I am from Jersey and have lived in Jersey all my life, and am from a Jersey Norman family. I hold no ill feelings towards France, nor any French person, except perhaps the French government, but not even French people like them. My grandparents spoke French, my father grew up speaking French with French migrant workers on our family farm, and I am proud of my deep-rooted Francophone heritage. In my previous video, I didn't talk about Article 502 of the Trade and Cooperation Agreement, and I will clarify what this article entails because it is vital to understand the dispute. According to the TCA, signed and mutually agreed between the UK, the European Union and Jersey, under Article 502 it reads, Each party shall grant vessels of the other party access to fish in its waters reflecting the actual extent and nature of fishing activity that it can be demonstrated was carried out during the period beginning on the 1st of February 2017 and ending on the 31st of January 2020 by qualifying vessels of the other party in the waters and under any treaty arrangements that existed on the 31st of January 2020, and that any vessel which fished in the territorial sea adjacent to that territory or that member state on more than 10 days in any of the free 12-month periods. Essentially, what this means is that French fishing boats will have to provide evidence that they have fished in Jersey's territorial waters for just a single fishing season in the past three years in order to be granted a fishing license by Jersey to fish in Jersey's waters. Keep this in mind as the rule set out in Article 502 will come up later. Now, as Jersey is not a part of the United Kingdom and is an independent signatory of the TCA, Jersey operates its fishing permits independently and differently to how the UK issues their fishing permits. Jersey can and often does conduct their own foreign policy separate from London, which means that the actions of the UK and Jersey are not interchangeable in this context. So whatever criticisms you may have of the British government, please leave Jersey out of it. Additionally, under the rules of Article 502 of the TCA, Jersey is not obliged to issue any fishing licenses to French fishermen who are unable to provide empirical evidence that they have historically fished in Jersey's waters. And it is the imperative of French fishermen to prove that they can adhere to the provisions of Article 502, not Jersey. As of writing my script, Jersey has granted 162 licenses out of 217 applicants, which amounts to 75% of applicants being accepted. The UK, on the other hand, has granted 100 out of uh, 175 applicants, which is 57% of applications. Jersey is acting in bad faith. The main accusation made against Jersey in this fishing dispute is that Jersey has unfairly demanded that only GPS data is accepted as evidence of historical fishing of French vessels. As some smaller French fishing boats under 12 metres do not use GPS devices, it was argued that such boats who were entitled to a licence under Article 502 of the TCA were unable to provide data this way. Where this accusation quickly falls apart is that after receiving feedback from French fishermen and from the regional president of Normandy, Hervé Morin, Jersey accepted most other forms of information as evidence of historical fishing. To quote Jersey's Minister of the Environment, John Young, We've been flexible in the kinds of positional evidence we've accepted, using VMS information, commercially available automatic identification system data, logbooks, chart plotters, and other written information. Similarly, French fishermen raised complaints to the Jersey government concerning additional requirements that Jersey had asked for in their application process that included to measure what type of fishing equipment that was being used and the type of fish that they would catch in order to monitor overfishing. 
which uh, French fishermen argued were not covered in the TCA. Jersey acknowledged this in good faith and has suspended those extra conditions. However, despite these issues being resolved a long time ago, we see this argument used again and again to justify punishment against Jersey, despite such reasoning being entirely based on outdated information. Acquiring such licenses is not a Herculean task. A vast majority, that's 162, of French applicants have been able to provide evidence that they have fished in Jersey's waters. It is important to note also that the Jersey Fishermen's Association estimates that the number of French fishermen who regularly fished in Jersey's waters was just 67. And now the French government is attempting to bypass Article 502 and force Jersey into granting 217 licenses. Jersey is being greedy and wants all the fish to themselves. This argument essentially comes from prejudiced assumptions people make about the Jersey people, and it's completely untrue. Jersey has shared their waters with French fishermen for centuries, and we have sold our fish in France for an equally long amount of time. Jersey has very close ties, both diplomatically, historically, and culturally, with France. Our island is deeply rooted in French culture. We don't hold any ill will against the French people. To claim otherwise is bigoted and wishful thinking. So why has Jersey begun a licensing scheme for foreign fishing boats? Well, the actual reason for this entire fishing dispute, which is kept hidden in the saber-rattling press of both the UK and France, is actually quite simple. For the past few years, Jersey has complained that our fishing stocks are depleting, primarily due to the large industrial French fishing trawlers that used to be able to fish in Jersey's waters without any limitations or restrictions. As such, Jersey wished to implement a fishing system to monitor and maintain the marine ecology of Jersey's waters, which is a hotspot for fish. It is as simple as that. It's all about the marine ecology. If no monitoring or checks are implemented, then overfishing will continue and there won't be any fish left for anyone, Jersey and French alike. Yet, I don't seem to find this mentioned anywhere in the French or British media, and I have to wonder why. Jersey is currently in the process of collecting and collating data from various monitored breeding grounds around Jersey, and will send a report to the European Union on their findings of the extent of overfishing. Due to the depleted fishing stocks, Jersey will then be able to enact Article INST 36, Safeguard Measures Article of the TCA, which reads as, If serious economic, societal, or environmental difficulties of a sectional or regional nature, including in relation to fishing activities and their dependent communities, that are liable to persist arise, the party concerned may unilaterally take appropriate safeguard measures. This will allow Jersey to unilaterally take the appropriate measures to protect the marine environment from overfishing, as per the agreed articles of the TCA. France is resorting to threats because dialogue is no longer working. Out of all the arguments I'll present, this one has to be the most offensively incorrect and misinformed accusation against Jersey. If anything, it is the Jersey government who have been constantly insistent on engaging in discourse with both the regional French government and with French fishermen themselves, whilst it has been the French government who have actively refused to engage in dialogue and have been aggressively issuing threats against Jersey. As soon as Jersey started to enact the provisions of Article 502 back in early 2001, the French government closed their communications office in Jersey and illegally banned Jersey fishermen from landing their catch in France, depriving Jersey fishermen of their livelihood, all the while French fishing boats were allowed to continue to fish in Jersey's waters. As the French authorities refused to engage with Jersey's government, French fishermen had to send their data to Paris, and then from Paris that data had to be sent on to Brussels, and then that data had to be sent on to London, and then London had to send the data to Jersey where it is collated. As such, this is a very lengthy and time-consuming process that caused confusion, misinformation, and data to be lost. Whereas, that information could have simply been sent by the French fishermen themselves straight to Jersey, only 20 miles away from where most of them live. When French fishermen sailed into St. Helia Harbour to protest, the government of Jersey personally went out and talked to them face to face, 
and were able to come to an understanding between both parties. Annick Girardin, the French Minister of Sea, then banned French fishermen from talking to the Jersey government. And I would like you to ask yourself, why doesn't Girardin want the French fishermen to talk to the Jersey government? What does the French government fear if their fishermen were able to have a dialogue with Jersey? I expect France to do what every single modern Western country is assumed to do, engage in dialogue and not resort to threats. That is what Jersey has tried to do. We said, we're doing something wrong, okay, but let's talk about it and try and fix the problem. So we tried to talk to the French authorities and fishermen numerous times, but we were ignored and threatened. If there is any imperative for dialogue and reason, it solely rests with the French government. Jersey has not given French fishermen enough time on purpose. This statement couldn't be further from the truth. Jersey has allowed French fishermen to continue fishing in Jersey's waters for most of this year in an amnesty period, which meant that even those who could not provide evidence that they had historically fished in Jersey's waters, they were allowed to continue to fish as much as they pleased in this time period. In order to maintain good relations with France, at least as far as it is possible considering their temperament, Jersey extended the amnesty period four times over ten months, from the end of April, and then again until the end of June, and then once again until the end of September, because of feedback from France that Jersey wasn't allowing enough time, Jersey extended the amnesty period again to the end of October. Jersey even granted 49 temporary licenses to French fishermen who were unable to finish their application in the 10-month amnesty period, which will allow them until the end of January of 2022, a total of 30 months, to complete their application. France is justified in shutting off electricity to Jersey. Putting aside that it is expected that most modern Western nations are supposed to engage in dialogue instead of resorting to inappropriate forms of retaliation, as I've explained in my previous points, Jersey is not breaking the DCA, so there is no serious grounds in which the French government can retaliate and issue threats. But most importantly, by retaliating against Jersey by claiming that they're breaking the TCA, France has themselves violated the TCA. Another vitally important article in the TCA is Part 6, Dispute Settlement and Horizontal Provisions. Within such, the TCA specifically highlights that in the case of a dispute, regardless of who is in the wrong and how, the dispute must be referred to the European Commission, and they will act as an arbitrator. The EU will then decide whether or not action will be taken, and if so, appropriate measures can then be taken against the offending party. Where France is violating the articles of the TCA is by unilaterally declaring that they will punish Jersey by restricting their power supply and banning Jersey fishermen from landing their catch in French harbours. To quote Jersey's Minister of Foreign Affairs, Ian Gorst, The disproportionate threats we've heard, for example, to cut off Jersey's electricity, would be cutting off an energy supply to 108,000 islanders, to our hospitals, our schools. It would be a breach of the trade agreement, would be entirely disproportionate, and is entirely inappropriate. Jersey's relationship with our friends in Normandy, France, and the wider European Union is a vital one, we will continue to work closely together on the remaining outstanding complex issues. And if we compare that with what French member of the European Parliament, Pierre Calaskind, has said about Jersey, if tomorrow the fishermen are not allowed to go fish there, we will consider retaliatory measures on the importation of fish products caught by the fishermen of Jersey. Minister Girardin threatened to cut power in Jersey a few months ago, and this threat is not completely in the air. They think they can live on their own and badmouth Europe as well? <laughs> what is this guy talking about? If France doesn't want to follow the rules of the TCA, they should have never have signed the agreement. Whether you believe that France is in the right is completely irrelevant. They must follow the rules and articles of the TCA. To quote the Jersey Minister of Home Affairs, Gregory Guida, who is actually a French national who was born in Paris, if France has said that it's going to do that unilaterally, then it makes you wonder why they're a part of the EU. The EU does all the international negotiations for EU member states. That is not just EU protocol, but is part of the trade and cooperation agreement. The EU decides what retaliatory measures are proportional, and they have to be implemented by the EU. 
I am quite ashamed of being French right now. They're showing a complete disregard for EU protocols and a complete disregard for the truth. Additionally, not only would France cutting off or restricting electricity to Jersey be a violation of the TCA, it would also illegally break another contract that France has signed with Jersey, which guarantees power supply at a fixed rate via the underwater power cables from France to Jersey. Jersey is denying French fishermen from earning a living. As I have previously explained, Jersey has issued licenses for 162 French fishing boats and has been very lenient in the way that has been granting permits to the French. According to the trade agreement, it is the prerogative of French fishermen to prove that they can adhere to the provisions of Article 502, not Jersey. Jersey is not obliged to issue licenses to those who are unable to meet the provisions of Article 502. If there is no proof that the 55 French fishermen had made their living by fishing in Jersey's territorial waters, then there is no evidence that Jersey is denying anyone their livelihood. Speculation, opinions, and emotion isn't going to change the facts of the matter. However, the government of Jersey has recognised that because French fishermen's data has to be sent from Paris to Brussels to London and then to Jersey, that some of the data may have been lost on the way due to bureaucratic incompetence in either Brussels or London. As such, Jersey has granted temporary licences to 20 of the 75 applicants who had previously been denied, allowing them to fish in Jersey's waters for an extra three months whilst they can resubmit their application. Jersey's government is open to any rejected applicant to resubmit their application so that everybody has a fair chance. And the funny thing is, despite all the bleeding hearts from the French government and their avid supporters who are crying the cause of the French fishermen, in truth, most French fishermen don't give a shit. They've gotten their licenses and they don't care about the jingoistic racket of their government. All they want to do is get on with fishing like they had done. Chris Le Missouria, who joined the French protest in St. Helier Harbour back in May, reported that The French fishermen that I deal with on a daily basis who applied for a license from Jersey were given one. They are happy and are actively fishing to put food on their families' tables. They don't have time to go on Facebook or speak to the media. Also, they don't want boats that don't actually fish around Jersey to be given licenses because that will impact on the available resource. They just want to get on with their lives. The most offensive aspect of this argument, however, is the blatant hypocrisy. Where is the sympathy for Jersey's fishermen? It is they who are truly having their traditional way of living deprived by the malice of the French government. It is they who have been illegally banned from landing their catch in French ports, where F Jersey fishermen make most of their money selling to a ready French market. It is they who have been struggling to make a living fishing in their own waters. It is they who are being threatened by France for simply trying to fish. It is they who are catching less and less fish each year because of overfishing in their own territorial waters. It is Jersey fishermen's traditional way of life that is under threat. But where is the sympathy for their livelihood? And where is the concern for the marine ecology of Jersey's waters? Where is the indignation? when French harbour authorities are encouraging French trawlers to illegally fish in protected breeding grounds. Does the French government realise that if waters are overfished and environmentally ravaged, then everybody loses, both Jersey and French? If you'd like to learn more about the Jersey fishing disputes, I've put in the video description a list of Jersey news sources in chronological order if you wish to further understand this dispute from Jersey's perspective. I would also recommend that you watch my other video that serves as a part one to this video if you haven't already. Thank you very much for watching until the very end of this video. Abito et à la prochaine.